Hi again then guys, and welcome to another installment of Beards and Cars, of course. This is my podcast-style series, longer format, more of a discussion layout, and often the topics that we discuss tend to be conjecture or speculation of stuff which could be coming to Gran Turismo, discussing things that have been confirmed. Of course, we're still waiting for a number of cars, at least at the time of releasing this video, to be added to the game, probably this month. Stuff like the Porsche 962 and the Toyota A86. But this is another prediction-based video, but it's a much more broad one, because if you have watched my other predictions, they tend to be mostly safe predictions. They tend to be predicting cars that will come back or tracks that will come back that have very clear reasons for doing so and sometimes even evidence such as when we talk about NASCAR or IndyCar or Formula E or various other things that either have been confirmed or kind of tangentially confirmed in like the credits of the game that sort of thing. This time though this is much much more up in the air and these are the predictions which are actually the most fallible. These could all be completely wrong and never happen. But the risk and reward of a prediction like that is much higher if you do get it right. And also just having these cars in the game would be very cool. Now for this particular video, you'll have noticed from the title and from the thumbnail that it's a different kind of prediction. I'm not predicting returning cars, I'm not actually predicting new cars from any existing manufacturer, and I'm not even talking about what we did last week, which was cars that deserve to be upgraded from standard to premium. This is something way out of the box, and it's much harder to predict especially when it comes to polyphony, because their licensing is all over the place in terms of what brands they will and won't have in the game. With Forza, one of the biggest advantages, I would say, even if you don't like the series, and I'm sure there are some people on the channel who don't like Forza for whatever reasons, they are far more consistent when it comes to what brands are going to be in the game. You sometimes lose some, you sometimes gain some, but you tend to have a pretty stalwart example of brands who are pretty much always there. Gran Turismo is not the same. You lose brands in every game, you gain new ones in every game, and you can never really predict which ones are going to leave and which ones are going to come back. For instance, from Gran Turismo 6 to Gran Turismo Sport, we lost dozens of brands. And of course that's obvious because there are far less cars in the game, but even if you compare GT5 to GT6, we lost Jensen and we lost Ginetta. Those are two significant classic British brands which offered two cars which people really loved, the Interceptor and the Ginetta G4, which were just gone immediately from the game. Even in previous games, you had brands suddenly burst into the scene, and I would argue the best example of a Gran Turismo game for that was Gran Turismo 4, because we went from Gran Turismo 3 having whatever it was, like 300 cars, something like that, to then Gran Turismo 4, we suddenly had Pescarolo, Chaparral, Nike, Mercury, Cadillac, so many brands that had never been in the franchise before. That was a huge turning point, but again, a lot of those have been left behind. Now, in a lot of these videos, when I say to put your predictions down below, a lot of people seem to miss the point, and they just put stuff which we already have, or that's already been featured. The single sole purpose of these five predictions that I'm going to make, and one very honourable but unlikely mention, is that these have never been featured in Gran Turismo. So this is not saying, oh, bring Jensen back, bring Ginetta back, bring Nike back. No, this is not about that. This is brands that have never been included, which is what makes the prediction that much more risky, because there's really no proof to say that any of these could happen. These are just the ones that I'm going to predict. Of the brands that are out there, I think these are the most likely. Now, technically speaking, there's one prediction that I could make, which would kind of be a cheat, because it's never been featured but it will be at some point, and that is the Eagle Grand Prix car. I believe it's the Eagle Westlake that won the Pebble Beach GT Award, I believe it was, like last year or the year before. That's never been featured, and it is going to be, so you could predict that one. But it's not really a prediction, it's already a confirmed car, we just don't know when it's coming. So, these are five brands, as I said, that I'm going to go out on a limb and predict that I think will come. But first of all, my honourable mention. My honourable mention is a brand that I would love to see featured, but I just don't think it will, at least not anytime soon, and that is Hummer. I would love to see Hummer feature in Gran Turismo, the original Hummer in particular, the H1 Alpha, but I don't think that that's going to be. 
As far as civilian hummers, they have a lot more of a chance, I think, than military ones of coming to the game, but even then, there's just not a huge place for Hummer in Gran Turismo. Whereas in Forza, for instance, they've had Hummer for years. It's often one of my favorite cars in the game because you can do crazy engine swaps, make it insanely fast, and I love using it. It's a great car, a deceptively good one, in fact. But I just don't think it's going to come to Gran Turismo as much as I would pers personally even like it to. So what about my five actual predictions? Well, the first one is a prediction that a ton of you guys are going to have below as well because it's probably the number one brand that has never been featured that people want to be, for obvious reasons. Koenigsegg. I predict that Koenigsegg will come to Gran Turismo. Now, I don't necessarily think it's going to arrive in GT Sport, as cool as that would be. I just don't think it's going to happen yet. I think that Gran Turismo 7 would have a very sharp arrow in its quiver by showing a Koenigsegg in the trailer. That would bring many, many people's attention way up to having those new brands featured. And for many people, you probably don't care if Koenigsegg is in, but a ton of people really do care. Koenigsegg is one of those brands which you cannot ignore at this point. Back in the day when, for instance, Gran Turismo first introduced Pagani and Spiker, which, surprise, surprise, was once again in Gran Turismo 4, you could make an argument for not having Koenigsegg. They weren't as big of a brand, Pagani made a name for themselves, you could say quicker than Koenigsegg did, of making these fantastic over-engineered in the best way supercars. And Spiker, of course, was not a new brand, it was a revived name, so it had the historical significance. Koenigsegg, well, they came from Sweden, Sweden isn't known for supercars, they had to prove themselves, and now they have. Look at all of their accomplishments. They've made the fastest car in the world a couple of times, the CCR was back in the day, the Agera RS is, and of course they're now aiming for 300 miles per hour. Along with other brands as well, such as SSC with the Tratara, which I personally hope wins because I'm more of an SSC fan. But Koenigsegg has such a strong selection of vehicles to choose from. For instance, even if they only added one Koenigsegg, pretty much any Koenigsegg that you add to Gran Turismo is going to be useful for something. Even if you add the original Koenigsegg, which is my favourite, the CC8S, which is the least powerful model with 655 horsepower, even that would be a dominating force in N600 or N700 or whatever class system is being used in Gran Turismo 7, for instance. If they chose to add the CCGT racing concept or racing prototype, the one that never got the chance, look how amazing that would be in, for instance, a Group 3 category. Koenigsegg has such a strong base of vehicles that are all based around the same essential underlying vehicle. They all look the same in terms of the shape, they change the details, they change the style. Even their new vehicle, which I, I don't recall the name of, but the one that's aiming for 300 miles per hour, it still looks like a Koenigsegg. <laughs> they all look like Koenigseggs. They just change the headlights, they change the bumpers, but the essential shape remains the same. Because that's their brand. It's kind of like Pagani. The Zonda, the Huayra, the C12, the F, the Cinque, the R, they all share that same distinct Pagani shape. It's what a supercar brand needs, really, to make them recognisable. So, I think that Koenigsegg probably has the best chances, actually, of any that I'm suggesting here. But even then, I'm not going to even try and predict when that could happen, I just hope that it does. My next prediction is one which probably isn't as exciting to many people, but I could definitely see it happening, funnily enough, in more of a vintage form first, then maybe newer cars later, and that is Jeep. Now we've already had Land Rover in Gran Turismo, the Range Stormer, and then later on we had the Evoque. The Evoque was okay, the Range Stormer is very good, one of the fastest SUVs in the game, but no proper Land Rovers. Those are Range Rovers. Land Rovers are like the Defender, the Discovery, old school stuff. And that is what I think they would do with Jeep. I think they would go down the World War Willys Jeep route rather than adding like a Cherokee SRT8 or a, a Trailhawk or something like that. I think they would add the Willys Jeep first. I could fully imagine that being brought to Gran Turismo, especially if it were something like Pebble Beach and won the award. 
because they don't always give the Gran Turismo award to the best in show, they give it to whichever car Kaz liked the most. And I could fully see him giving the award to like a, a vintage Willys Jeep, because again, we do have some circumstantial evidence for that with the Volkswagen military vehicles. Seems kind of weird that they've added the Nazi cars and not, and not the Allied side of things with stuff like the uh, Schwimmwagen and the Kubelwagen. But I think a Jeep could happen. I would say that as a single vehicle, the Willys Jeep is probably the most likely here. But as a brand, I would say that Koenigsegg is more likely. Next up, one which I've wanted to see in Gran Turismo for a long time. Forza finally got it a few years ago. We've had Bentley, but we've never had the Big Daddy. Rolls-Royce. Now, Rolls-Royce has a wide selection of cars, many of which are not designed for performance, but these days, Rolls-Royce is finally tapping in to that kind of market, because they understand that people want that now. Even if they don't use the performance, they still want to say that they have it. Because gone are the days when you can be selective about who you want to buy your car. That's why Bristol failed. They were too stingy about who they wanted to buy and have their cars. They didn't want footballers putting 22 inch rims and pink paint jobs on a Bristol fighter. For understandable reasons. Rolls Royce has been forced to move beyond that. If Bentley did it, and they're still going strong, look at how many Premier League footballers are driving Bentleys with Luxani rims and all that ridiculous accoutrement. Well, it's sales at the end of the day. Who cares who buys the car as long as you're getting sales? Because that's where the automotive world is. There is no place for stinginess anymore. It's not a coach-built, you know, specific driver-to-driver, what do you want, sir, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir, kind of car culture. You just want to sell cars these days. So Rolls-Royce has had to change with the times. They're even making the SUV, which I personally think is a hideous-looking thing, but they're making it to keep up with the times. So I think that if Rolls-Royce were to come, it would be similar to Forza. I think that they would add a very new one, like a Ghost or a Phantom or a Wraith, maybe even the Cullinan, but I hope not, because that's like the worst possible Rolls-Royce you could add, because who needs a Rolls-Royce SUV? It's not what the company's about. So I would say the Rolls-Royce Wraith, maybe, in a similar way to Forza, is the most likely, but we'll have to wait and see. Personally, I would probably prefer something like a Rolls-Royce 101 EX, the V16 engine prototype, for obvious reasons, or just go super old school, go to like a, a Silver Shadow 2 or something like that. But I think Rolls-Royce has a decent chance. It's more a matter of when, it's a matter of licensing, that kind of stuff. The same issues that have played companies like Panos that were already in the game, or TVR, trying to sort out that kind of stuff. But sometimes we do see those return, such as the Tuscan, recently. Next up, I'm putting one which is another British mark, a very specialised one, and this one, again, I don't have super high hopes for, because for some strange reason, there aren't really that many games that have featured this brand strongly. Forza has featured it, they do currently in Horizon 4, and Toka, Toka Race Driver 3 in particular, featured a racing version, which was actually pretty cool, and that is Morgan. Morgan has a very impressive little selection of vehicles which don't tend to visually change that much because that's kind of their brand but it depends which Morgan you add. For Forza they added the fairly obvious one for a Forza crowd which is the Aero Super Sport. It's the modern more exotic Mo uh, Morgan. With Gran Turismo I think that they might go more down the vintage or classic route with like a Morgan 4.4 or something like that or a or even the, the more vintage-looking modern ones, like the Plus 8. I don't imagine them adding something like an Aero 8, as much as I'd like that to happen. If I had my choice of Morgans, I'd probably want them to add the Aero GT3 race car, but not necessarily the newer one, because that car was actually really successful. The one that was that weird, uh, like beige and green color that dominated in GT3, despite I think it still had like a wooden chassis or something like that, but it was a really good race car. I prefer the earlier 2000s one, which is silver and blue, which was featured in Toka Race Driver. I would love to see that car in Gran Turismo, but I don't think Morgan has a great chance, but I think it has a chance, as small as it is. So my final pick is an American brand, which I actually have a lot of love for, but you don't hear many people talking about it as far as wanting it in Gran Turismo. In Forza, though, it's actually been a part of the franchise for a long time, and that is AMC. 
AMC is, in my opinion, kind of like the Maserati of American classic production car brands because they don't really offer anything that you can't get from Ford or Chevy or Dodge, but they do offer everything in a more oddball package. And that's exactly what Maserati does. Maserati doesn't give you anything that, you know, Ferrari or Lamborghini or various others, Porsche, can't do. They just offer something that's a bit more unique, like Panos or Spyker or Pagani or Koenigsegg. They offer the more oddball twist on the market, and those tend to be my favorite cars. So for me, AMC, they just have such wacky little vehicles like the Pacer, the Gremlin, the Javelin. Even the names that they give their cars are actually really interesting. The cars don't have as much fame, generally speaking, as your Camaros and your Chargers and your Challengers and your Cudas, but they're actually really good little cars. Racing versions of the Javelin were successful, they were well known. I actually love the Gremlin, I think it's a really cool little muscle car equivalent of a hot hatch. And the Pacer, the fishbowl as it's often called, it's not a great car, it's a 4.2 litre hatchback with barely any power. It looks like a little boat. It's not good, but it's interesting. And again, going back to the Gran Turismo 4 mentality, they added certain cars in that game which weren't the best thing around, they were just interesting. So I could actually see something like AMC being brought to Gran Turismo. It's more of a question of licensing and how they could get that done. Obviously the licensing is still around because Forza has them, and they've had them since at least Gran Turismo 4, if not earlier, if I recall correctly. I, I, I don't recall... did I say Gran Turismo 4? No, Forza 4, I meant to say. Uh, I don't recall if they were in Forza 3, but they were definitely in Forza 4. And they've had the Pacer, the Gremlin, the Javelin. They're these really cool little cars that don't appeal to everyone, that's for sure, but they've got tons of tuning potential. They tend to be far cheaper options than a lot of the other more legendary muscle cars or hatchbacks. And they're just quirky, and I love that. I don't think AMC has a huge chance of coming to Gran Turismo, but at the end of the day, despite the fact that Gran Turismo often gets attacked by certain players for not having the latest and greatest cars, for instance the new Ford GT, or the McLaren P1 in its street form, more than one Maserati, you know, all that kind of stuff, all of which are fair points, Gran Turismo has actually done a good job of featuring a lot of brands. Because if you think about it, if you try to nail down significant brands which have not been featured in Gran Turismo, it's actually not easy. Finding these six was not as easy as you'd think. Even Hummer, as an honourable mention, you know, Forza's had it, but it's not exactly a brand that many games have. Gran Turismo has done a really good job of having the vast majority of the brands that are out there, the most significant ones at least, featured in the game. So finding even five or six significant ones that they haven't had, it's not as easy as you think. You can think of plenty of like smaller classic brands, you know, Westfield, Ariel, Donker Vort. There are tons of these smaller ones, but not really big brands, which is why ones like Rolls-Royce, Koenigsegg, Jeep stand out so much. So those are my five predictions. Koenigsegg, Jeep, Rolls-Royce, Morgan, and AMC, with an honorable mention to Hummer. Apart from that, I think that any other brands, unless I just completely didn't think of some, you know, you've got other ones like Saab, for instance, but I just don't see that happening. Smart, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But finding big, significant brands that have a good chance of coming to the game, it's not necessarily as easy as you'd think. Personally, I would love to see Hennessy come to the game, and of course SSC, but again, I think the chances of that are very, very slim, and of course I hope to be proven wrong on that. But that's it for my predictions. As I said, I'd love to hear yours down below. You could do five. By all means, do more if you can think of more, but try to make them as likely as possible. Because, you know, it's not difficult to come up with a load of brands that haven't been featured. The trick is to predict ones that haven't been featured that you actually think could be. Not just, oh, Gumpert, Kamar, um, Kapar, Caparo, not Camaro, <laughs> Caparo, Gumpert, Dallara, Lola, you know, these kind of brands that, sure, they haven't been featured, but do you really think they're going to be added anytime soon? Most likely not. So, that's it for this episode. Of course, as I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.